Good morning. How are we doing? How do I look? I look all right. My entourage is out working in the yard. She's putting in a new flower bed. The rest of my entourage is sleeping. Some of them I don't even know where they are. So I got to get myself fixed up here. They should be doing this. Every important person, of which I am one, at least I think I am, should have an entourage. Huh? Do you have an entourage? If so, do you know where they are? Hey, I want to talk to you today about the neglected ministry and teaching of Jesus. The neglected ministry and teaching of Jesus. It's all right here. In the Holy Bible. How many of you know that God's word is holy? God is holy and so is his word. Let's start in Acts chapter 10. Acts 8 verse 10. Acts 8 verse 10. It says, Acts 8 10. Or is that Acts 10 8? No. It says, and how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who are oppressed of the devil. Peter said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Amen? Now this is a huge deal. Because Jesus healed all who were oppressed of the devil. Let's look at this in uh, Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8 again. We're talking about the neglected teaching of Jesus. Matthew 8, it says, And when the evening came, in verse 16, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. Oppressed, possessed. With devils. And he cast out the spirit with his word and healed all who were sick. Now, <clears throat> There are 197 verses in the Gospels. Some of them are repeats because some of the Gospels overlap. <clears throat> but 197 verses where Jesus is casting out devils, dealing with devils, talking to devils, or teaching us about devils. He called them devils. Devils are actually what we call today demons. That's demons today. Devils. This is the neglected teaching of Jesus. Now, if there's 197 verses in the New Testament on this subject by Jesus himself, can you tell me why in the world are people not teaching this? They don't. You can go to a thousand churches and you will probably never hear the devil mentioned in any of them. Or maybe one. <clears throat> you go to a good word of faith church, <clears throat> you might hear somebody talk about the devil. Very little. Yet he's everywhere. He's everywhere. The devil himself, it tells us in Job chapter 1, he stands in front of God. 
The devil has access to God. He's up there talking about you. He's the accuser of the brethren. He's accusing you day and night. He's trying to make his case. He is trying to get God to let him have access to you. Read Job chapter 1. That's how it works. Jesus taught about the devil. Sickness, disease. One place it says that Jesus cast the, the devil out of a blind man and a deaf man and he could see and he could hear. Is there a blind spirit? Is there a devil or a demon that causes blindness? Apparently so. Is there devils and demons that cause deafness? Apparently so. Amen. Jesus cast them out. Are there, are there devils? It tells us in uh, Mark chapter 9, is there a devil that causes uh, epilepsy or seizures? Apparently so. Jesus cast it out and the, and the child was healed. They called me one time. Uh, a man actually was, was connected to me through somebody I knew on their Facebook page. And his, his son was severely, a, he was possessed, to put it mildly. He was having seizures, constant seizures. They had done surgery on his brain to try and relieve the seizures and had blotched the surgery. The child was in the intensive care unit at Arnold Palmer Hospital dying of an epileptic seizure. He was having a continuous seizure. <clears throat> they hooked me up with this guy. He sent me a text message and he said, Pastor Jim, it's like he has a demon in his head. That's what the man said to me. I sent him back a message and I said, he does. Now, I had been briefed a little bit on this. I said, you call me when you're in the room with him. So that evening at 5 o'clock, he was in the intensive care unit. The whole family was in there with the child. He was dying. Doctors had given up on him. They put me on speakerphone. I said, you foul demon, you foul spirit, you come out of his head right now in the name of Jesus. And boom, he was healed. Within a minute, he was done. He came to his senses. The seizure stopped. He got up. They kept him there a couple days or a day or so just to make sure the doctors wouldn't let him go. But they sent him home. I have a picture of him. <clears throat> I have a picture of him two days later sitting in a restaurant eating a rib sandwich with his family. Simply because I studied the neglected teaching of Jesus. Now you tell me why everybody isn't doing that. You know, most churches today, we were talking about this last night, most churches today are not really interested in meeting the needs of the people. They're not interested in meeting the needs. Now, I'm not talking about giving money to people. I'm talking about breaking the poverty, the, the, the spirit of poverty. Poverty is caused by an evil spirit. And so is all sickness and disease. Cancer, all sickness and disease. Jesus understood this. That's how he got so many people healed. William Branham understood the same thing. And when he did, he started the healing revival of the 50s. He realized that inside every sickness and every disease is a demon. The doctors will tell you cancer is a life of its own. It's a separate life inside your body and inside that life is a spirit, an evil spirit. It's like a woman when she's pregnant, she has a baby inside her belly. That baby, when that baby is conceived, that baby has a spirit. There's a spirit inside that baby. That spirit inside that baby in that mother's womb is from God. 
That's a wonderful spirit inside that baby. But the spirit inside cancer is evil. Now, all you have to do to get cancer healed is tell that spirit to come out. In the name of Jesus, and I'm telling you what, brain tumors go away. We've had brain tumors the size of a ping pong ball just shrivel up and go away. How? Why is that? Because as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead, the Bible tells us, that tumor cannot live without that evil spirit in it. Jesus knew that. That's why he got so many people healed. He told the evil spirit to come out. We had a, a lady presented to us at, a, at an event in Orlando, stone cold blind. I set her down. She sat down in front of me. Couldn't see a thing. I said to the crowd, I said, do you want to see a miracle today? Do you want to see a miracle right now? I said, in the name of Jesus, you blind spirit, come out of her right now. And I stepped back. Then I stepped forward again and I put my hand over her eyes. I said, take off your glasses. She took off her dark glasses. I said, in the name of Jesus, these blind eyes open. I stepped back. Within two minutes, she could see perfectly. Spirit, evil spirit. Same thing as Jesus encountered. I did it exactly the way Jesus did, and I got the same results. I'm telling you what, this is not rocket science, folks. This is not that hard to do. Amen. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that have faith in my name. They shall cast out devils. It takes faith in the name of Jesus to do this. I'm telling you what, if you're oppressed, if you've got a, a, a chronic illness or sickness or cancer or diabetes or blood pressure, I'm telling you what, there's a demon behind it. We get rid of that demon and your blood pressure will go away. Your, your diabetes will go away. Your cancer will dry up. Cancer dries up and goes away. The body expels it because we get rid of the demon. Amen. Arthritis. Generational curses. A generational curse is when a demon is allowed in there from generation to generation to generation. And believe me, they come in and they stay. There's only one thing that will get rid of a demon of sickness, and that is a command made by somebody who has faith in the name of Jesus. That's where we're at. If you need help with this, please get a hold of me. You don't have to suffer with this crap. And everything from the devil to me is crap. It's not necessary. We don't have to put up with it. We can get rid of it in Jesus' name. The neglected teaching of Jesus. 197 verses. I'm telling you what, these churches aren't teaching on this. These churches are operating. They have no power. They have no power over the devil. The people are, you know, the wonderful two Two wonderful churches here in the Melbourne area. They have wonderful music and smoke and lights and, 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 and flowing robes and the whole thing. But their people are dying. Their people are staying broke because there's no power in that church. There's no power in those churches because nobody in there has faith in the name of Jesus. Well, they do in our church. And I'm not the only one in our church either. There's other people in here that do. Amen. Glory to God. I'm out of time. Go to my website, increasenow.com. We can help you. We can get rid of this. Learn. I'm going to, I'm going to talk some more about that this, this week because I want people to understand this neglected teaching of Jesus. Hey, make it a great day today. And remember this, God's word will save your soul, heal your body, and pay your bills.